Well, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers and also the morning speakers for what's turning out to be a really fascinating discussion about a topic that I think deserves much more interdisciplinary and open discussion. Artificial intelligence has made really dramatic progress in the last 10 years. If you want to think about and realize how much, just think back 10 years to February 2007. In February 2007, there was no such thing as an iPhone. In February 2007, if you talked about seeing cars driving themselves on the highway next to you, people would think you were science fiction. Back then, if you even talked about having computers that could reliably translate back and forth between Japanese and English, that sounded pretty far off. But today, we have all of these things and more. Today, I can pull out my phone, I can speak to it, it understands what I'm saying well enough to execute the command. If I go to take a picture, before I even click the button, the camera has analyzed the scene before it and spotted the different faces so that it can focus on those. So AI has come very far, very quickly. Now the point of my talk, the main message of my talk, in fact, is that is this, that AI is having two fundamental impacts on us and is likely to have uh, much more. One is that it offers the opportunity for great advances in our standard of living, improving our personal health, relieving congestion and pollution in our cities, increasing the productivity of our workers, improving government effectiveness. The second, uh, impact, though, is that because of these dramatic changes, it's going to challenge us to rethink many things, our ethics and our laws, the systems we have for distributing wealth, the economic systems, even our sense of self as individuals. So what I want to do with this presentation is review some of the recent progress in AI, extrapolate that to some of the progress we may see in the coming decade, and then step back and look at the implications of that for society and the individual. So um, let's start there. One of the areas in which AI has made dramatic progress recently is perception, such as computer vision. What you see here on the left is part of a uh, standard test set that's used to challenge computer vision algorithms and to measure their competence. And the goal of the computer vision algorithm, given any one of these, there are about a million images, its goal is to recognize what are the objects in that image. And there are about a thousand different objects. What you see to the right is the dramatic progress in the performance of the best available computer program for this task over a five-year period, going from error rates close to 30% to now human level competence at this task, around 4% error, which is what people make when they have to identify these objects in these images. So a lot of improvement in a short period of time. Similarly, in speech recognition, we have the same kind of phenomena. Uh, Microsoft, in fact, announced last fall that on one of the major standard data sets there, using switchboard speech, they had reached human level competence. Similarly, in robots, we now do see um, occasionally self-driving vehicles on the road, um, but robotics is making progress in other areas as well. Self-flying vehicles, robots underwater, robots operating in the fields of the farms, in the mines, and occasionally as a vacuum cleaner in our homes. Yet another area where there's dramatic progress is game playing and reasoning. So last year, as many of you know, the AI program AlphaGo defeated the humans, the best human Go player. And other AI programs have defeated the best humans in other games like chess and poker. So there's a lot going on, a lot of progress suddenly. What's underlying this progress? The answer is primarily machine learning. 
So there's been a switch in the strategy of AI researchers, which uh, further back was a strategy of trying to write down algorithms line by line. And the switch is to instead try to train them by showing them examples. And to understand this, think of the following task. Suppose I asked you to write a computer program to recognize your mother in photographs. So it's something we can all do ourselves. But if I ask you to write down the algorithm, you will fail. At least everybody who's ever tried to do that has failed. And if you even think about how you'd write down instructions to me as a person, and you have to write down the instructions without showing me a photo of your mother, then you quickly realize how difficult a task it is. So it, it turns out, in fact, to be too difficult. But what's easy and what works very well is to instead train the program with examples. Show it, here's an example of a photograph, and there's my mother. Here's another example, there's my mother over here. Here's an example, there's a person, but it's not my mother. So with enough positive and negative training examples, the program can learn the subtle distinctions at the image level that distinguish your mother from others. And that's the idea of machine learning and training a program rather than to write down the strategy line by line. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that that machine learning strategy is very generic. And so it can be applied to many other problems. In fact, it's currently being applied to thousands of commercially important problems. Instead of classifying images of your mother, we could classify electronic medical records of patients according to whether they should be diagnosed with pneumonia or not, or classify those records according to whether a particular therapy will work or not, or classify credit card transactions according to whether uh, this transaction is likely to be fraudulent or not. So machine learning and the collection of relevant data to train those systems is what's really primarily the driver of the sudden recent progress in AI. And this leads me to actually uh, the first um, uh, impact that I think AI has already had on us as a society. I think we're actually at the beginning still of a decades-long trend toward increasingly data-intensive, evidence-based decision-making across all walks of life. And that trend is being fueled by the growing volume of online data and machine learning algorithms. You could think of it as a trend, a kind of tidal wave that's pushing us toward a new age of empiricism, of decision making based on data. So that's um, kind of where we are now. What's next for AI? Well, it's, it's never easy to predict the future. I can't either. But one thing I think we can say confidently is that we're going to continue to see advances in the use of machine learning from big data as more and more organizations collect more and more data to, for example, understand which of their customers are likely to want which products, to optimize their internal processes, and so on. Another trend we may see over the next decade is the appearance of uh, products we can buy to achieve superhuman vision and hearing. Now that system AI systems are at human level in some of these perceptual tasks, um, why not have uh, products that improve our vision? I wear contact lenses as a technology to improve my poor vision up to 2020. If I could instead purchase contact lenses or hearing aids that gave me even better visual acuity or hearing than uh, standard, there might be cases where I would want that. Another trend we may see, this one might be a little further out, is machines that really understand text. We don't have those yet. Of course, we do have search engines that can retrieve for us documents that contain the keywords we're searching for, but those search engines don't really understand what that text means. On the other hand, we now have programs that can translate English to Japanese, 
And those programs have to have a little bit more of a hint of the meaning of the sentences in order to accomplish that. If AI gets to the point of having programs that really can understand text, it'll be a watershed moment for all of us. Why? Because when computers read, they will read it all. They will read the million books that Amazon has, every web page, every news article, and they will be better read than you and I by a factor of a million. Search engines will disappear the way we think of them now. They'll be replaced because each of us will have a personal reading assistant. If we have a question, it will answer it directly based on what it can read, and it'll prepare a paragraph summary justifying its answer, along with citations to background reading that we can dive into if we want. So that's an example of something which may or may not happen, but if it does, I believe personally it will happen eventually. But when, so when it does, it will have a dramatic impact. Here's another example. Um, I think we're going to see a trend toward a particular kind of conversational interaction with systems. Right now we have very simple conversations with our phone. We might ask them the weather, they might tell us. But instead, here's what I'm interested in. Um, there are a lot of apps that we don't exist on my phone, which could exist. For example, I'd like to tell my phone or have an app that whenever it snows at night in Pittsburgh, it wakes me up half an hour earlier, sets my alarm earlier. But nobody has written that app, um, so I'm still waiting. But the trend that I think we're going to see this decade is that I won't have to wait. Instead, I will say to my phone, whenever it snows at night, wake me up. 30 minutes earlier, it may say, well, I don't know how to do that. Do you want to teach me? And I will say yes. And I will say, here's what you do if you want to know if it's snowing. You open up the weather app. You go to the tab called Current Conditions. And if the Current Conditions field says S-N-O-W, it's snowing. <laughs> so what I've just done in that simple conversation, very natural to us humans, so I've basically programmed my phone. I've now given it a condition it can monitor, snowing at night, and something to do when it detects that condition. So the reason I think this is a really significant uh, target for AI, and I think it's one that we'll be able to do within a decade, is that it effectively turns every single one of us into a programmer. So today there are probably hundreds of thousands or maybe a million people who know how to write software for phones. This will change that number to billions, the number of people who own phones. And so the creativity, the customizability, the uh, general pool of bubbling ideas of what we can do with these devices, the pool of people working on that will grow by orders of magnitude. Okay, so those are some of the things we may see coming. Um, let's step back and think about how these things will influence society and maybe our view of ourselves. Let's start by thinking about the impact on city life and start there even just by thinking about the impact of self-driving cars, which many people think will be in cities within a uh, decade. Of course, self-driving cars will have positive impact on traffic congestion, deaths, pollution. They'll drive faster. They will weave through the intersections the way humans walk down the sidewalk and just pass each other without stopping. Um, cars will also allow cities to remove a lot of the parking lots that are using valuable real estate and turn them into city parks. Why? Because the, the self-driving car, if it needs to park, could drive out of the city to a place where there's more free space. Cars will have sensors, of course, cameras and others, that allow them to drive, but those sensor data will be networked to the city, giving the city a kind of uh, uh, set of roaming sensors that are reporting back to give a, the gestalt, the full picture of what's going on in the city. That'll lead to instrumented cities, and what will the cities do with all that data? Well, they will apply machine learning to that data to learn, for example, to anticipate or to predict when a crowd appears somewhere, 
to predict whether, for example, their crowd is going to grow or shrink over the coming 30 minutes. And using that prediction, the cities will then be able to make more intelligent decisions like whether to send a uh, reroute a bus over there to help the people when they want to leave, or send some police there to prepare for the crowd that's going to be um, growing there. Cities might also use that network to, for example, clear a path if an ambulance needs to get through. They'll just order the uh, self-driving cars to pull over. But they might also order other self-driving cars to drive up and block the alleys in case some human on a motorcycle comes through and accidentally would get in the way of the ambulance. So the, the, these cars are both sensors and actuators that can be controlled by the central city. This may also lead to uh, new roles for government. If, the, if city governments are going to collect this data and act on it, maybe they will who do those jobs better. If you're a security guard, being able to have superhuman vision will help, but it won't replace you. You also are there because you need to take action if something happens that requires intervention. And there will be others, intelligent workflow assistance, perhaps robots, uh, computers that read in summary will influence other kinds of jobs. So the bottom line is that AI has both positive, will have both positive and negative impacts on employment. It'll make humans better at some things, it'll eliminate some jobs, it'll create others. It will also hopefully improve our education, which is gonna be important when people need to retrain to get a new job. There's interesting research on online tutoring AI systems that adapt the curriculum to the needs of the student. AI is already giving us new, fle more flexible ways to work. Think about Uber, which allows people to work when they want and not work when they don't want. The whole Uber business is possible because AI software is being used to match up drivers who are looking for a passenger to passengers looking for a driver. And other AI systems in Uber are being used to tell the drivers where to hang out while they're, so that they'll most probably find a passenger soon. However, the one that actually consider, uh, bothers me the most is that I think AI progress, whatever it does to total employment, and there are forces in both directions, is highly likely to further skew the distribution of wealth. So I look at it this way. AI progress is going to grow the total wealth pie. Who could be against that? But it's also going to worsen the skew in income and wealth. And who could possibly be for that? It'll worsen that skew partly because the jobs that'll first be automated will be the jobs that don't pay very much. So those are already people on the lower end of the income scale. So what can we do? I think society can start now to improve access to education, maybe to debate ways of reversing this growing wealth disparity, and to consider the question of if we need fewer taxi drivers in the future, what do we need more of? Maybe medical workers or other things, and use that as a guide on retraining. So let me just finish up by taking a look, quick look at how AI might also change our sense of self. It's interesting, if you think about it, the internet has already changed my sense of self. I'm actually a more social guy than I used to be. I'm more in touch with my family and my friends because of text messages and video conference calls that I can do remotely. I'm also more knowledgeable. If I'm in a conversation and need a fact, I go to Google, thank you, Peter, and look it up. Um, but I think AI will give us even more changes. It'll ch if we start wearing uh, hearing aids that give us superhuman hearing or glasses that give us superhuman vision, it's almost a biological change to ourselves. AI will also, I think, through many mechanisms, challenge our sense of who we are in self-worth. If a computer takes over my job, even if I get a guaranteed minimum income, I'm going to feel, I'm going to question whether I'm actually earning my keep and contributing to society. And intellectually, who am I if a computer can do better anything that I'm trying to do? 
So I don't know the answers to all these questions, but my goal here is to raise them. I think they're important trends. Uh, we don't really know exactly how AI is going to develop, but it is moving fast, and I think some of the things here will happen. Um, so I hope that this helps uh, feed into the ongoing discussion today. Thank you.